So, what did you think of the movie? Honestly, Luke, it wasn't great. Really? I loved it. I thought the actors were great. What do you mean? I thought they were awful. That's not true. How about you, Rick? I'm not sure. What? Come on. The special effects were awesome. Yes, that's true. But you also need good actors and an interesting story. I loved the actors. Meryl Adams was great as the mother. That's true, but the other actors were terrible. Rick, what do you think? Uh, some of the acting was okay, but generally, I think I agree with Sylvia. And the music was awful. What? I love that type of music. I know you do, but I hate it. What about the director? He's amazing. Hmm. I don't know. He hasn't won an Oscar, has he? No, that's true. But he could win one for this movie. <laughs> Now I know you're joking. Joining us now to talk about his latest TV show is the British explorer Tom Kingsley. Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So, Tom, in the show, you attempt to travel around the world without flying. Can you tell us a little about your experience? Sure. So, I left London and went by train to Paris. From there, I took a bus that went through six countries in Europe before I arrived in Athens, Greece. Next, I went by boat to Egypt. After arriving and doing some sightseeing, I rented a car and I drove all the way to Kenya. Though I had to go by ferry to cross into Sudan. In Nairobi, I found a ship that could take me to India. In Mumbai, I bought a motorcycle and rode from India across Southeast Asia all the way to Singapore. I spent a month there before I found another boat that could take me all the way to the U.S. It took three weeks to arrive. Finally, I took the bus and train across the U.S. Wow, that sounds like an amazing journey. It really was. It was pretty difficult at times, but I met a lot of amazing people and stayed in some very unusual places. I'm sure you did. Were there any surprises? Well, to be honest, the most difficult part was checking into my first hotel in the U.S. After traveling so far and staying in so many unusual places, it was kind of strange to be somewhere so normal again. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. How can I help you? I have a reservation for a double room for two nights. Okay, great. Could I have your passport, please? Of course. Here you are. What time is checkout on Sunday? It's at noon, sir. Great. And is breakfast included? Yes, it is. It's between 6 30 and 10 a.m. in the dining room. Do you need any help with your bags? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Is there Wi Fi in the rooms? Yes, there is. The password is on the desk in your room. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Do you need anything else? Uh, yes. Can I have my key? So, what's your favorite food, Tara? Sushi? Pasta? Actually, I love American food. Really? What? Like hot dogs and burgers? Mmm, yes, they're delicious. Especially when you cook them on a barbecue. Yes, but that kind of food is so unhealthy. I know, I know. 
but I don't eat it very often. Actually, during the week, I usually eat something simple like salad or pasta. Anyway, what about you? What's your favorite food? Ah,、uh, it's difficult to choose, but Thai food is probably my favorite. Oh, really? Isn't it really hot and spicy? Ah,、uh, a lot of the dishes are yes, but my favorite is made with coconut milk, so it isn't spicy at all. I usually make it with noodles and lots of vegetables. No, stop! You're making me hungry. <laughs> Sorry. Should we go and get some lunch? Yes, please. I'm starving. Why don't we go and have some Italian food? But I thought you like American food. I do, but there's a really good pizza place near here. The slices are enormous. Sounds great. Let's go. Are you ready to order? Yes, I'll have the chicken salad, please. Okay. Would you like something to drink? Could I have a mango juice with ice? Certainly. Would you like to see the dessert menu? No, thanks. Can I have the bill, please? Good morning. Can I help you? No, I'm just looking. Thank you. Oh, actually, can I try these jeans on, please? Of course, the changing rooms are over there. Oh, they look really great on you. Thank you, but I think they are a little small. Do you have the same style in medium? Yeah, here you are. These are perfect. How much are they? They're thirty-five dollars, but there's a ten percent discount. Oh, great! I'll take them. Hello, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Lost the Plot. Each week, I tell you the plot of a new movie in just one minute. Oh, and remember. There will be spoilers. This week, I'm talking about Wes Carpenter's new adventure movie, A Long Way Down. It tells the true story of two friends, Joel Sampson and Stephen Gates, who try to climb to the top of a mountain in a remote part of the Andes in South America. The two friends reach the top of the mountain. But on their way down, the weather becomes really bad, and they try to climb faster. Unfortunately, Joel falls on the way down and breaks his leg. The two friends carry on trying to get to the bottom of the mountain, but the situation gets worse. Then another accident happens, and in the end. Stephen cuts the rope that connects the two men together. Joel falls again, but somehow he survives. When he finds out he is alone on the mountain, he tries to get back to their camp. It takes him three days, but finally he makes it. Amazingly, the two men both live to tell the story. I think this is my seat. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Hi, my name's John. Oh, nice to meet you, John. I'm Laura. Where are you from? I live in France, but I'm American. Oh great! I'm Spanish. I love France. Me too. I live in the South, and the best thing is the weather. Yes, I sometimes visit France for my job. I stay with my aunt in Toulouse. That's very close to me, but I live in a small village. What's your job? I organize ski vacations in the winter. 
So I'm usually there from December to April. How about you? I'm an English teacher at a high school. Do you like your job? Yes, mainly because I get to work around 8 o'clock and I finish at about 2 in the afternoon, so I have a lot of free time. Sometimes I swim and sometimes I go for a run. In the evening, I like to meet friends in Toulouse or they come to my home. Do you live in a house or an apartment? I live in an apartment with my wife. She's French and works in the restaurant in the village. Do you like French food? Oh, yes, I love the food. I get up early and go to buy fresh bread for breakfast. Yeah, it's delicious. You'll have to come to the restaurant sometime. I'd love to. New Year's Eve is a big celebration in our house. We put up decorations. My whole family puts on our dress clothes. My cousins and grandparents come over for the evening and we make a big meal and eat together at home and count down to midnight. It's a lot of fun. Well, I live on my own, so New Year's Eve isn't really a big event. Of course, I see friends and family, and we usually eat together at my parents' house early in the evening. But then I go home, and the rest of the evening is just like any normal day for me. I watch the celebrations on TV. I'm American, but I live in Italy. I have friends here, but not family. I usually go home after the new year because the flights are expensive. In the morning, I get up and have a big breakfast. Then, I always spend the afternoon and evening with friends, and we have a big party and dance in the street at midnight. We have two small children who get up early every morning. They are on school vacation, of course, but we don't get to stay in bed. We have a normal evening, and then my husband and I might watch a movie, but to be honest, I'm ready to sleep at about 7 in the evening, so New Year's Eve doesn't really happen. I think New Year's Eve for me is all about going out. My wife and I don't want to spend the evening at home. We want to relax and spend time together and do something a little special. There's a great place to eat near our house and the staff are so friendly. It's always busy and they make it a really special event. Hi. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes. I'm interested in taking a course. Is that a full-time, part-time, or evening course? Um, well, I work during the day, so do you have anything after 6 o'clock? Sure. So that's the evening course once a week on Wednesdays. Does that work? Well, I usually play badminton then, but I'm happy to change that to another day. What would you like to study? Well, I want to take French or Italian. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, but the French course started last week, but the Italian starts later. Okay. That's great. I'll take that one. And when exactly does it start? So, today is the 9th. So, it will be the week after next on May 18th. And what level are you? I studied it at school for three years, so I guess I'm intermediate. And I took a three-week course last summer. Perfect. It's a 10-week course, and I need to take payment before the first class. Uh-huh. -hmm. How much is it? It's usually $200. But we have a special offer right now, so it's only $160.
That's good news. And is there an exam at the end of the course? There is, but you don't have to take it. If you do take it, you'll get a certificate. Hmm. I'm not sure right now. That's fine. You can decide later. Now, can I just ask you to complete this form? Well, there's something for everyone this week in Lansdowne. First of all, all week at the Westford Movie Theater, you can sing along to the hit musical Cowgirl. I'm sure you all know the songs by now. And the movie theater tells me you can wear costumes on Friday to meet the main star, Louise Miller. That has to be fun for all the family. Then, at the Central Theater, you can watch the play that everyone's talking about. Showtime has two performances this week, on Thursday and Friday. Tommy Fagan is wonderful in this play about the child from a poor background who becomes a famous ballet dancer. Get your tickets soon because they're selling fast. If you want to do something outside, you can go to Heathland Community School Festival. On Saturday, from noon to six in the evening, you can listen to live music by the students, have hot and cold snacks, and there's even a dog show with prizes. All the money raised will go toward the new library. Finally, maybe you want to try something new. On Sunday, from 10 until 12, you can try Sakudo, a new form of karate. The Sakudo School is looking for new members. If you are over 18, please come along. You don't need any experience. So, if you need to get healthy, get off the couch and start a fun new hobby. Hi, I'm Andrea. What's your name? Nice to meet you. I'm Pierre. Are you French? No, a lot of people think this because I have a French name. My mother's from Paris, but I was born in Scotland. How about you? I'm from New York. Have you ever been there? No, but I'm going this December. My cousin lives there. She's studying art in college, so I'm going to stay with her. That's great, but it's really cold at that time of year. Colder than Scotland? A lot. So, you should buy some warm clothes before you go. How old are you? I'm 21. You? The same. Anyway, what course are you starting today? I'm taking the art course in the evenings. I wanted to take the full-time course from Monday to Friday, but I have a job, so I can't. Oh, okay. That's a shame. I'm taking the full-time one. Give up your job and we can be classmates. I'd love to. Are you going to the welcome party tonight? I'm not sure. What time does it start? I think it starts at 8 p.m., but let me check. No, it's at 8.30 in the common room. Yeah, I can come because that's after my soccer practice. Do you play? I played in school, but I haven't played recently. I usually go to the gym on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, if you have the time, you should come along one week. Yeah, I might. A team sport will be more interesting. Well, I have to go to class now. See you at the party? Sure. Please, come in. Oh, you don't have to take your shoes off, so please don't worry. Okay, first, here's the kitchen. It's modern and bright. 
They are taking the dishwasher with them, but they're leaving the fridge and freezer, which is good for you. As you can see, it has large windows opening to the backyard. The owners love gardening, and it has a tennis court. The swimming pool looks really ugly right now, but it won't cost much to make it nice again. Okay, next to the living room. Some of the furniture, like the armchair and coffee table, is going to stay because the couple who lives here right now are going to move to a smaller house. There's also a small downstairs bathroom over here. Let's go upstairs now. There are three large bedrooms. They use one of them as an office. But since you have two children, I'm sure you will want to change this back to a bedroom. The toilet and bathroom are also in different rooms right now, so you might prefer to join them into one larger room. Outside, there is a garage for two cars and parking for five, which is good when you have family or friends visit. As I told you before, it's only a five-minute bus ride into the city center, or about 20 minutes on foot. This house is also closer to your children's school, which was something you asked for. I think that's everything. Do you have any questions? Today on the show, we're talking to our health expert, Sandy Williams. Hi, Sandy. Hi. So, today we're talking about food and where people choose to buy it. That's right. I was interested in the grocery store versus local market, so I decided to try a week buying only from a local market. That sounds like a great idea. Yes. Like you say, we all have the power to choose where we buy our food. It taught me and my family a lot of things. I usually buy from both a grocery store and a market, so it wasn't easy to use just one for everything. I think I'm like most people and head for my grocery store. It's always open when I need it, unlike a farmer's market, which is closed at 10 p.m. Exactly. Also, during my market week, I didn't know where to buy everything. It took much longer to start with. You have to go to many different places rather than just one store. Yes, and people with busy lives like me don't have time for this. No, but it wasn't bad at all. For example, the food is usually much better and healthier for you. Most people know this, of course. But my garbage went down, too. Grocery stores have a lot of packaging. A box of cereal, a bag of potatoes, a carton of eggs. Local markets use paper bags. Also, because the food isn't cheap, you eat it all. You don't throw it away. So there is also less food waste. That's great. But your weekly bill was high, wasn't it? Well, this is true, but not by much. It's easy to buy more than you need at grocery stores because they have fruits and vegetables in bags. You can't choose how many carrots or apples. You end up throwing things away. When you shop at a market, you just ask for how many you want. So, are you changing your shopping habits? Yeah, most of the time I'm at the market, but I'm not super strict about it. If I have a particularly busy week, I still go to the grocery store. Well, I'm Tom, and I'm a freelance writer, and I work from home. So most of the time, I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt. I could wear pajamas all day, of course. In fact, one of my friends does this. 
The thing is, I don't feel right in them. I tried it once and couldn't work. I think it's because it felt like I was going to bed, not to the office. I also tried wearing business clothes, like a suit and tie. I did this for about a week, but I didn't work faster, and I was actually very uncomfortable. So yeah, it's jeans and a t-shirt for me. I do sometimes have to go to conferences and meetings. That's when the suit and tie come out again. Some other freelance writers don't enjoy this, but not me. It's like a nice day out for me. I often see people I don't usually see. It's not as good when you have a lot to work on, though. I don't need to wear formal dress clothes. I just like to, for a change. I bought a good suit a few years ago. It wasn't cheap, but it was money well spent. I wear it to any formal occasions, weddings, meetings, formal dinners, that sort of thing. It's lucky I can change the shirt, tie, and shoes so every time it looks different. I might have to get a new one soon, though, because it's a little tight around my middle. When I'm not working, I usually wear athletic clothes. My wife doesn't like it because she says athletic clothes are for playing sports, and I never do this. I think I last played soccer about three years ago. But think about it. If you aren't interested in shopping, like me, you can go to the sporting goods store and get everything you need. The last thing I want to do is go around town for hours choosing expensive designer clothes. That's what my kids enjoy. Every Saturday, my son and daughter meet friends and spend their money on clothes. They're just like their mother. Hi, Evie. Hi, Dad. I think we should look at the list of camping stuff you need for your college trip. Do you have it with you? Well, I did, but I left it at Lucy's house. Don't worry, though. I can find it on the website. Here we are. Okay, so it says we'll need a raincoat. I'm not sure about that. It's so hot right now. Yeah, I know what you mean. But the weather changes in the mountains a lot, even in the summer. I'm sure you'll need to put on a raincoat at some point. Is your brother's the right size for you? Yeah, it was, about two years ago. So we'll have to go shopping for that. Then it says a pocket knife. I have one already. Do you want to take mine? It's better than yours. It cuts really nicely. But carry it carefully. We don't want any accidents. Okay, I'm 17, you know. Next is a good flashlight and a camera. There's a flashlight in the garage, I think. I haven't seen that one in a long time. We should buy a stronger one anyway. You're going to need it when you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm going to get really tired if I keep waking up at night, you know. You'll be fine. Oh, and I need a thicker sleeping bag. Mrs. Jones says it gets very cold at night. I'll put that on the list. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, a camera. Don't you have a good one on your cell phone? That's the easiest thing. It is, 
but my camera takes the best pictures. Do you really want to take that? It can easily get broken on a trip like this. Good point. I'll leave it. Oh, and lots of chocolate. Is that on the list? No, but energy bars are terrible, and chocolate does the same thing, doesn't it? I guess so. Don't you need a compass? Yeah, but one per tent, so Linda's bringing that. The final thing is a good pair of boots. It's a good thing we climbed that mountain last year. Oh, yes. Of course you can take the ones we bought for that. Okay, let's go into town. Remember to bring the list. That's a good question. Generally, I don't think we will need our bodies very much. Machines will do it and will become less active. I mean, we already have voice recognition. So, we don't really need our hands to type messages or search for websites. Next, we might work from home even more, eat in more, buy everything on our phones, so we won't really need our legs. Maybe in about 200 years, we'll look completely different. Hmm, let me see. Well, the last 20 years has been incredible in the way of technology. No one can say that's not true. The next 50? I know they're planning to make long trips by plane shorter. That has to be a good thing. My son lives in Australia, and I go there every year to escape the winter. It takes about a day. I get bored on the plane just sitting still for so long. The main thing is that I think social media will change. There will be better computers, and I think Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter will become less popular. There might be apps where you can taste or smell something from a restaurant in town. That would be amazing. Just think about it. Tasting food before you eat out or smelling flowers before you buy them. I'm still waiting for flying cars. I always remembered to record this show every week when I was a child. It was all about the future and had some great ideas. I enjoyed watching it so much. But actually, I don't think much of it has come true. So I really don't think that much will change. We will still take the bus to work, exercise, check social media, see friends, and that sort of thing. I know most people talk about the future, saying things like how technology will get faster and space and stuff, but I think we should look at things that are really important. I plan to work for a charity, and having a world without hungry people and with good medicine for people in the poorest countries is my dream. I believe this will happen. Well, I've never thought about that. I have my own business and work long hours, so even when I am out of the office, I have to answer the phone. The best thing I can do to relax is to get fresh air. I don't care where I go. I just need the wind in my face or to feel the sun on my skin. Rain is okay, too, because it energizes me. It's a good thing that I live near the ocean. That helps. Well, 
For me, relaxing is all about having coffee with friends, climbing a mountain with my sister, and watching a DVD with my parents. It's better than being on my own in my apartment. I will only worry about school. I'm studying history in college, and I spend a lot of time alone in the library reading. So when I have time to relax, I try to escape my own company. I'm a sales clerk in a really busy city with a lot of tourists. I have never spoken to so many people. I might talk to a hundred people a day, and my Spanish and Japanese are getting really good. When I get home in the early evening, I go for a run or just sit down with an interesting book. Then, I might have dinner in front of the TV. I don't want anyone around me. Well, I'm a journalist for a local newspaper. I'm running around all day and work evenings and weekends. The thing that helps me to relax is doing what I love. I wanted to be a chef when I was younger, but actually, I think it was the best thing that I didn't go into cooking as a career. Right now, I'm getting home from work, going to the butcher's or the local market, and trying new recipes. It's a lot of fun. I was a hairdresser for 30 years, and I didn't have much free time. I've never been the kind of person to sit in my armchair and read a magazine. I want to see the world and try new things. These days, I have more time, and the way I relax is by getting on a plane. This year, I've tried surfing in Spain and yoga in Thailand. I'm the happiest person when I'm away somewhere hot. Hey, Irene. Hi, Patrick. How's it going? Good. Listen, do you have a minute? I need to talk to you about Dara's 30th birthday party and who is going to do what. It's next month, so we only have a few weeks to plan. Yeah. Good idea. Well, I can do the music. I've been a DJ twice at family weddings, and I know the kind of music he likes. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might want to do this. That's great. So, next is food. We actually have two jobs. One is the food shopping, and the other is the preparation. Yeah, well... Can you ask your sister? She'll love doing that. Oh, sorry. I forgot to say. I have asked her, but she's going away that weekend. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe we can ask Tina for the shopping part. She can't cook, though. She cooked for me once, and it was terrible. I know. But she should be able to make sandwiches and put some bags of chips in bowls. It's really easy. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Claudio can do the shopping instead. He has a car, too. So maybe it's better for Claudio to buy the food and Tina to prepare it. Okay, what next? Hmm. Do you think we need to put up some decorations? Yeah, and get some fireworks. It is his 30th, isn't it? I'm planning to ask Sherry about that because her dad has a party store in town. Yeah, and she can help us choose what to get. Oh, and did you see the invitations? I sent you an email. What did you think of them? Oh, yeah, I forgot to say. They're great. I loved the design. It was really colorful. But do you think we should add some contact details? You know, in case they need to get in touch? Yeah, that's a good point. 
Should I add my phone number? Yeah, if you don't mind. No problem. Most people have it anyway.